trying out the uh, squash here. It's really good actually. Salty and boiled butter. This morning we got some ripe figs here. I just watered the tree. We're gonna go up there and check out and pick some of the ripe ones. This thing is producing like crazy, you know, figs. Oh yeah, right here. This one, ooh, this one's overripe. Oh, it's gonna be gushy. Look at that right there. It's all juicy on the inside. Um, I think I saw one more. And these things get overripe fast. Yep, there's another one. Right here. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a little moldy. All right. Let's see if the chicken's like that. It's so sweet. It's unreal. That's crazy. Figs are actually really good, people. That is the, the sweetest fruit I've ever had. Wow. So good. Uh, we're gonna do a little pepper harvest today, too. This, oh yeah, look at this. A little one of these guys fell off. I don't even know what happened to it. It's kind of rotted. Something was eating it. Um, but I think it's about time that these weird bell peppers are done. That's what it looks like on the picture, and that's pretty much what they look like now. So, just gonna twist them off. And they're pretty big. They're not as big as normal bell peppers. They're longer and skinnier, but, you know, these would be pretty good. Oh, leaf on there. Got some, uh, I think these are ripe. Yeah, this is the kind that you'll buy in the store. This is like the Persian long kind. And there's one here, too. Oh, and there's one more right here. Oh, wow. These things are huge. And uh, check this out right here. This thing grew so much. Like, literally, yesterday, this Armenian cucumber was this big. So these things are going to grow like crazy. These down here, these are just great to eat or, like, put in uh, food and salad and stuff. All right, before we build the tomato trellis for these guys, we are going to do a cucumber harvest real quick. There's a lot of these guys hiding around. Check this out. The Armenians are growing like crazy. And I also found one down on the ground. Somewhere around here. Yeah, right there. And that's great because those things are going to get big. And I don't know if it'll stay on the bottom. All right. So, yeah, right here. There's a bunch just hiding under these leaves. Look at this crazy shape we got right here. And then another one right here. A little bit overripe. It's hard to see them it's hard to tell because you see them green and flipped over it's like oh it's yellow under there it's even rotting up a little from being all the moisture on the ground uh, got another guy down here and the aphids they're really fighting we're gonna have to we're gonna have to keep spraying all that soap on them like regularly uh, looks like we got we got right here yeah that's that's good you know we might even pickle these and there's always more hiding out they're just small ones, but even even though they're small, doesn't uh, doesn't mean they're not ripe. Like, see, this one's small, but that's just because it's like a weird form. It's yellow on the bottom there still. So I could literally go for hours just hunting these guys down. Got a small. Got a small Persian at the back here. This could probably go for a little bit longer. It's a little bit light green down there though. I like to eat them kind of small. Make it good for uh, salads and stuff. Oh, whoops, right here. Here's the harvest. Oh yeah. We're really stacking up these cucumbers. I think we should do some pickling. Got some peppers here. I don't know if you can pickle these, uh, but the pickling cucumbers are for sure good. Not these, uh, these guys right here, Longfellow. Well, we got this huge frame right here built uh, and it is massive and it's pretty heavy so I'm not sure how we're actually gonna take it into there um, but you know I yeah I seriously don't know how we're gonna take it in here just a quick update this thing Logan here is not looking too good and apparently the ground was sinking and the roots were becoming exposed so we kind of leveled out the grass my dad worked on that um, coffee right here is starting to wilt so I'm gonna watering it and I think we're gonna start working on these trees quite a bit more but the mango it's doing really well same with the banana this leaf was not here uh, two days ago it just grew it grows a leaf every two days so that's really good this thing will be 
really tall pretty quickly. But yeah, let's... I really don't know how we're gonna get this in. Might even have to, like, haul it up onto the roof. Um, but I'm just gonna try. Just try and carry it through there without killing anything. So we got it all the way back here. It wasn't too hard. Next part is quite a bit harder. We're gonna have to squeeze it through that little gap right there and uh, put it right over the tomatoes. Problem is we got this cross section right here, which is basically to uh, provide stability. It's gonna sink into the ground about two feet on each side, and this is gonna go in the center. So we're gonna have to space out these tomatoes a bit to get them ready for it. tomato just got crushed while it was going in and also the trellis is just a bad trellis so it kind of broke down while it was being put in I really hope this one doesn't die because this is our best plant right here the root structure though it might be all messed up now um, these other two they're completely fine they're doing well some of the branches broke but also another problem is one of the stakes it went oh shoot did it hold on I think it went through, yeah, it went through one of the rungs of the trellis right here, so we're going to have to chop that. Alright, it's not going into the ground anymore. This thing fell on it with the ladder. I think it's gone. Look at all these that we're losing because of it. Uh, if the roots are good though, this thing will stay alive, so we need to tie this thing up. These trellises are horrible. The trellises right here are, are good. The reason this fell was because of its trellis. It just brought the whole thing down once the top got too heavy. Same with here, so we're going to tie them back up and then start tying string around here. <laughs> standing up I don't know I think this guy might die he got it really hard lost a lot of branches lost a lot of fruits too which just sucks because uh, he like look at that that's they're starting to change color this is our best tomato right here but like I can see it's been stripped the leaves are just they're just all wilting and dying so I don't know. This guy, I'm almost 100% sure will survive. It didn't get hit too hard. It's got a strong root system. Just the trellises, you know, buy strong trellises. These little wire ones, they're just so bad. They fall over when the tomato falls over. This one right here, you can see this trellis. I don't know how though, actually, but it's still going really strong and uh, they're keeping the tomatoes in. The rest of them, you know, they still got hit pretty hard when this uh, frame went in, but I think the ones in the back stay alive pretty well and if they <laughs> stay alive we could get some seven foot tomatoes growing in this giant area so I'm gonna go ahead and tie the string um, which we're gonna need because you can see they're starting to come out uh, and go into the place they're not supposed to um, so yeah I think I think it'll be okay but by the end of today we'll determine if they're alive or not but still green no color loss it's just wilting so far this, like some of the branches are just for sure dead.
two sides of it done. So you can see we didn't go all the way to the top, mainly because, you know, that's a lot of extra work. It's quite high up there, and also we don't know if they're actually going to make it up there. I went up to here because, if you look at these, these have already easily made it up to there, so I'm sure these can. I think it's alive. I think it's going to work. Um, I did the bottoms down there because there were some leaves that were just climbing out, and mainly because these trellises are, like, falling on the ground. But I didn't do this side because we have to... We had to get down there somehow uh, and harvest all the ones at the bottom. And especially right here, they're pretty much enclosed in their trellises. Um, so it's it's fine to not have the string there. Uh, but I did this right here, and you can see it's kind of like a triangle crisscross. I left some major openings right here, and that is so that we can harvest and prune and, and work them, because we need to be able to get in there and uh, do some work on them. So last but not least, we got this side which it's, it's just insane um we got to do this side because we need to be able to walk in here although you know i don't even know how this is going to work but the reason we did this side was because we needed to be able to walk in and work on these and now the reason that we're going to have to do this side is because we need to walk in and work on these which are they're still yellowing up down there that might be a blithe or uh, something also if you look down there we got our first orange somewhere in the back oh yeah you can barely see it we'll harvest those later today um but you know it's just getting kind of crazy in here in fact let me let me walk in all right we're backing in to the tomato corner right here and i am up to my neck in tomatoes almost up to my head this is insane oh my goodness wow look at this it's just crazy um you know actually i don't think we need to keep a string here because we got to get in and uh work around. In fact, I think it's okay to have it like this, just on the outsides, just so that they would have somewhere to climb without falling down. I think I will do a string at like this level, like right here, where we have this first cross beam, because um, they, they're starting to fall down, they're needing some help and some support, so we'll get right on that. massive tomato trellis for these guys which are probably dead i sure hope not ones on the outer edges are getting like yellowing on their leaves a lot more now i think it's i think it's a blight disease blight disease i keep saying it wrong or something because i put a bunch of fertilizer on and not much is happening uh, we lost a few tomatoes off of this guy when it fell but i think it's still alive i think it's still very much alive it's a strong plant i think it could take that when the ladder hit it, it it just hit the metal part down there so even if that does die it's okay because there's already way too many here it'll give more uh more soil to all these guys that these three right here they're giants giant beefsteak giant purple and giant yellow so a bunch of different giant colors and you can see we got some growing on the side right there um what i'm most proud of is i managed to clear this enough that look at that it's just clear you can just walk right through it walk in here easily I mean you get brushed a little bit um, but then you can harvest this side easily you can harvest the cherry uh, and then you can look down here and easily harvest whatever's there at the back or on the sides here and there's some more of that yellow life it's worse it's the worst on uh, this current cherry right here we haven't gotten any color changes yeah, this guy, this little guy right here, he just fell off. This is our stripey, and I think it is ripe. It's kind of orange. Not sure exactly what color they're supposed to get, so I'm going to cut it open and eat it later. Um, but right now we're going to, I'm just going to go work on these, all these guys that are way too tall, and I'm just going to try and reinforce them back into their trellises. Just uh, chopped and pruned out a bunch of rot on this one. This one is probably our densest growing right here, and... Uh, we got a lot of rot in there because when I water it, sometimes the water hits up in the leaves. 
they die off and rot so you can see some of it down there just chopped it up through it here pruned some of the stuff around because it's just getting too too full in there <laughs> we're getting so many cherries i really hope this one doesn't doesn't die from uh, blight because it had some on it and i just took it out uh, but yeah let's go get somewhere in here oh yeah if you look in here we're getting our very first cherries in fact yeah look at how orange they are that's a cool color we're gonna let it get red i'm just gonna let that whole thing ripen down the line and then we'll just cut it off like that that's probably what we'll do with all of them but you know let's go check out the the stripey that we just just got so sometimes tomatoes are sweet uh, i don't know what this one's gonna be like Ooh, that's a good tomato a bit acidic A bit underripe. It's still kind of sour, but you can taste where it was getting sweet. And stuff like this, you can just eat. It looks kind of weird, but it's basically, once it gets red enough, it's just a fruit. Like, not even a vegetable at all. Especially, um, I found this one variety of grape growing outside my hangar 18 gym took home some of them germinated the seeds grew it grew in like a month it grew in like three three or four weeks we got the sweetest cherries you can ever have and they basically taste like a fruit it tastes so good always reminds me of uh summer because you know that's when they grow best cherries they if you grow them right they'll taste really sweet and grapes sorry it was a grape grapes taste really cool too they kind of like grapes um Mostly with the shape, but if you grow them enough, it can be like a really sweet, really sweet kind of flavor. Anyways, I hope, uh, I hope these two don't die right here. I mean, if you just look at it, just look at how many, there's probably like, uh, like 30 or 40 tomatoes just on this guy right here. There's just tons more that are going to keep on coming. Um, but you know, these are the biggest ones right here and surprisingly they haven't got any virus yet. Um, but they are at the back. They're separated away from the, the other ones in the front. And these were kind of a different variety than I grew last year. The cherries, though, I always grow cherries right there. Tarant cherries, the, the golden kind to be specific. So I think that's how they got it. Um, take a look at cucumber real quick. This thing is just growing, like, it's huge every day. I don't even recognize it. Um, check the one down here. Yeah, that one's growing a bit. They'll be right before I know it but you know these things get a lot bigger and just an update lots of flowering on this watermelon most of them are uh, male flowers but as you can see we got a little baby watermelon right there uh, and we'll get tons more if it's on the top it's just gonna sprawl out it's gonna cover up this whole thing and I think I think things are going on pretty well and I think it's it's starting to get into summer I think we can start focusing maybe on the bunnies, bees, animals, uh, and starting working on the ground over there, if we're going to put in grass or not, especially a, uh, a sunshade to cover them up for when it starts getting hot. Uh, just take a look at that though, that thing is crazy. I mean, when I put up those trellises over there, the, the wooden and the metal one, extenders, that did look kind of crazy, but they grew into them pretty quickly, um, and stuff grows a lot bigger when you give it something to grow into. So I think this will actually, I think we can actually fill it up. You know, it's already starting to get up there at the back there with that yellow one. Um, but yeah, if you come around here, it just looks crazy. <laughs> like that's just insane. Um, really tall, looking like a small greenhouse right there. And rebar is actually pretty strong. Like when it's reinforced like that, when it's not reinforced, it's pretty weak, but um, Maybe I'll get myself uh, a welding iron and and uh, some rebar and maybe use that to build up our greenhouse because when it's reinforced like that, it is incredibly strong. Like I was amazed at how how strong it was with those arcs like that. Um, not sure how we do it over here. I would really have to really plan that out, just like I did with the fence here, but even better. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll keep thinking about it and I'll let you know. Alright, we got one more thing to do. 
before I end this episode is probably getting longer than I intended already. And the episodes, they are, you know, I'm still trying to figure out, like, what I should make them. Uh, I think I'm just going to do, like, one, one focus on each of them because those 30-minute ones, like, no one's going to watch that whole thing. Uh, we got to block this right here. When I was in there, Leo actually busted in. He climbed through this right here, and I've already said it before, but, you know, we gotta block that. Uh, and the problem is we got this right here, so I'm just gonna push it all back. We got some extra chicken wire, and we're gonna cover it up. But he should be locked out now for sure. Put the board down there and drilled it in place uh, to keep this mesh down, because I figured he could probably sneak under that. But, you know, I don't see any way he can get in besides if he wanted to crawl under there, but he probably wouldn't want to do that. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty much finished. The only thing with the fence is there's no latch on that gate back there, and it opens all the time. He only wants to come in when other people are in, so we should be good. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Oh, yeah, check this out. Um, it's only been a few days since we started getting aphids in here, and look at this. We're already getting tons of ladybugs. Well, not that many, but, like, a significant amount of them all over eating up the aphids. So, you know, we might actually not have to keep using this spray we might actually just be able to let the ladybugs take care of it and that's just you know nature uh balancing itself out but just look at them they've all they've all come to help out so hopefully they'll clean this place up pretty nice